Welcome to Dan's ADV. In the past, I've used this channel just to post footage of my epic motorcycle adventures like Greece and Moab and the Colorado Backcountry Discovery Route. But today I'm going to make an informative video about Honda's adventure motorcycle lineup. I've had the privilege of owning three out of the four main adventure motorcycles that Honda offers, and there's quite a difference other than just engine size. Now, there's two main reasons that I ride Honda adventure bikes. One is the reliability, and the other is the dealer network. I plan on taking my adventure bikes to the most remote locations in the country, and I just don't want to deal with breakdowns. And secondly, if I do have an issue, I want to be as close to a dealer as possible. I feel like if you throw a dart at a map of the U.S., nine times out of ten, the uh, closest dealership to that dart is going to be a Honda dealer. So let's take a look at the specs on each of the four main bike categories that we're going to cover today. In the upper left hand corner weighing in at 317 pounds and claiming 24 horsepower we have the CRF 250L for around 5200 new, 35 to 4500 used. In the upper right, 30 pounds lighter and nearly twice the horsepower than the 250, but also twice the price, we have the 450L. It's going to cost around 10,000 new, between seven and nine used. In the lower left, hailing from 1992 and still sporting a carburetor, we have the XR650L. It's 60 pounds heavier than the 450 with nearly the same horsepower. It can be purchased new for around $7,000, and since it was originally from 1992, the price range is all over the map as far as used. And finally, in the lower right, we have the CRF1000L, also known as the Africa Twin. The Adventure Sports model weighs in at 533 pounds, nearly 250 pounds heavier than the 450. But it also has 95 horsepower, which is over twice the power. These can be purchased between 14 and 17,000 new depending on trim, and I'm seeing them between 9 and 12 used. Of these four bikes, the only one that I have not owned and traveled on extensively is the XR650L. The XR650 is a solid machine, but it is a design from 1992. It is one of the longest running production motorcycles in history, and it just didn't interest me as much as the other bikes. I have ridden the 250L uh, through Moab. I owned it. I've ridden it on lots of local rides, but I have a video of the trip to Moab. Uh, the Honda 450, which is here on my right, I put my son on that bike and we did the backcountry discovery route about a month ago. A video should be somewhere here. I've also done videos of taking this bike through area off-road parks. Um, again, videos, links should be somewhere above. And the Africa Twin, I've taken on the Colorado backcountry discovery route twice and done a whole bunch of local rides that I just don't video. So I do have experience on each of these bikes. So let's look at the remaining three bikes in a little more detail, the pros and the cons, and then at the end I'm going to go over a list of questions which may help you decide which bike is right for you. Now if your main driver of your decision is price, then look no further than the 250L. It's the least expensive by far, it's been proven reliable on many round the world excursions. Just type in 250L around the world into YouTube and see what comes up. For a small upcharge, it can be purchased in the Rally trim, which adds a windscreen, a larger tank, and a bit more suspension travel. It has an extremely low cost of ownership, long maintenance intervals, and it's light enough so that you can pick it up by yourself if you drop it. So why not just buy a 250L and be done with it? Well, there's a lot of people that have done just that. In fact, one of the guys I follow on YouTube is Moto Euro. I'll put a link below. He started on an Africa Twin, went to a GS, and is now on a 250L rally doing the Trans-European Trail. There are people that start one and head to the rally, and then there's people that go the other direction. It really depends on what you want. There are a few drawbacks to the little 250. The biggest is the horsepower. If you really enjoy the hard hit off the line, being able to out-accelerate anything that you're sitting next to, the 250 is just not going to do that. It's going to get you where you want to go eventually. It doesn't have a lot of passing power on the highway. And while you're talking about highway speeds, it will be buzzy. It's not the end of the world. You, you just get vibrations in your hands and your feet and through the seat and you have to decide, how long do I want to drive this thing to get to where I want to go? Or do you just trailer it? Which is really the case with the 450 as well. Both of those bikes are pretty buzzy on the highway. 
The last drawback on the 250 is the suspension. It is soft and it is not made for aggressive riding like motocross whoops and challenging off-road sections at speed. But the cure is just to slow down. If you, do, if you can take your time, 250 will get you just about anywhere you want to go. So it should be an easy decision. Just buy the 450L. It's got twice the horsepower. It weighs less. Should be the perfect lightweight adventure bike. Kind of. What you need to know is there's a huge cost of ownership difference between these two bikes. The 450 wants an oil change every 600 miles. That's right, 600 miles. So on the Colorado backcountry discovery route with the 450L, we had to change the oil halfway through the trip. It's not a huge job. It's not that big a deal, but you are bringing oil and a filter and a funnel and you have to figure out how you're going to dispo dispose of your used oil and it's just an overall hassle. Also there are 1800 mile intervals on the valve checks. So that's not a huge job if you know what you're doing, but every 1800 miles or every three oil changes, you're looking at the valves. And then according to the manual, at 20,000 miles, you're looking at a top end rebuild, which includes the piston and the rings and several other things. So you need to know that going in, this is a high maintenance, high performance machine, whereas the 250L is more of a tractor. It's gonna go forever. You really don't have to do anything to it. The 450L on the highway is still buzzy. It's still a lightweight bike. You're still gonna get blown around. It's not an amazing road bike, but it will absolutely get you there. And it has a whole lot more passing power on the highway than the 250L does. The great part about the 450L is it is a very close kin to the motocross 450R. The 450R, the 450X, and the 450RX all share the same engine with the 450L with some slight modifications. For that reason, it's a dirt bike with blinkers. It's great off-road. It will hang with your buddies on their KTM 500 EXEs. But is it a great adventure bike? Well, to make it an adventure bike, you can go through a lot of mods. And John Young has a channel that is phenomenal as far as he's probably tried $10,000 worth of parts on his $10,000 motorcycle that he goes into detail on each part and if you're going to buy this bike or want to know more i put a link below most people that buy this bike from what i'm seeing in the forums also add a vortex ecu an aftermarket exhaust and a comfort seat if they're going to use it for adventure so add two thousand dollars to the purchase price of your bike so this brings us to the africa twin maybe this is the be all end all adventure bike that we've all been looking for for some that well may well be true as with any motorcycle decision, it really depends on how you want to use the bike and your skill level. For the asphalt, there is no comparison to the other bikes on this list. It's heavy enough to be extremely stable and it has the power to cruise at 10 miles an hour over any legal speed limit in the US all day long. Its seat, ergonomics, electronics, suspension, and wind protection are all completely different class from the other bikes. It can handle the weight of all but the most unreasonable cargo and would make an excellent commuter and you can feel free to bring a passenger on a cross-country tour but this is an adventure bike so what about off-road well off-road this bike will take you as far as your skill but that may not be as far as you think if you've been watching Chris Birch do amazing hard enduro on his oversized adventure bikes and you think you're gonna get on a bike and do the same thing you might be surprised most of us that are average riders do not do well in single track on a big ADV bike. It just doesn't work, it's too heavy. Here's what I have found though. If you're willing to put in the practice, like low speed figure eights, hill starts and stops and recoveries, clutch and throttle control exercises, and get those down before you go on a backcountry discovery route, you should be fine on any of the BDRs as long as you're not alone. The issue comes when you drop one of these big ADV bikes in an awkward position. Most of us can pick them up if we're on a flat surface, but if it's bars down on a hill or in a ravine, it becomes extremely difficult to get these bikes recovered by yourself. So that being said, if you like to go solo and you see a single track that you want to see where does that go, if you're by yourself on an Africa Twin, you're probably going to pass. Whereas if you're on the 450L, that's something you might go do. As far as necessary aftermarket parts, you're going to find that the Africa Twin has to have crash bars. The 
side case is notoriously vulnerable in easy light drops. There's so many uh, videos on YouTube where this bike gets dropped and a hole gets punched in the side case. Do that. Other than that, all of these bikes are going to need uh, pannier racks and luggage, which is an extra expense if you're going to make an adventure bike. Here's the questions that I would ask to help you determine which of these bikes you might want to use. Are you a new rider with a limited budget? You just want to explore some areas around where you live? Maybe do a little back road commuting or short camping trips? You don't mind buzzy bike at high speed and you don't need to take a passenger? 250L may be perfect for you. Or maybe you want to keep up with your friends through tight single track on their motocross bikes. You're willing to trail your bike to the backcountry discovery route instead of ride it from your house to the start. If you don't mind motorcycle maintenance and you're not looking for passenger accommodations, you have about $12,000 burning a hole in your pocket, the 450L is probably your ticket. Lastly, if you just want to do street and and fire and jeep trails solo and you're willing to take a friend with you when you do more hardcore off-road and you don't mind dealing with the extra weight then an Africa Twin makes a fabulous adventure bike. Unfortunately if you fit in more than one of these categories you might end up with two bikes. Anyway I hope you enjoyed the video thanks for watching please like and subscribe.